Awesome. What a great introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been a great friend for so long, Christian, and all, all you, Brad and John and, you know, Dean and uh, et cetera. Everybody's been just amazing. I'm really excited about what you guys are doing uh, with this LFI, FIC. It's, uh, it's something that's so sorely needed. I, I was talking um, to Christian earlier this morning, and I was saying, I said, you know, I, I one of the things that always frustrated me about going to Primerica events was, you know, you'd go there and you'd have uh, million dollar earners up on stage, you know, telling stories and whatnot and trying to motivate people. And I, I always I always thought, well, why don't you just teach what you did to make a million dollars? Why don't why don't you just do that? Why why tell me what kind of house you have, a car you drive, or well, I don't care anything about that. You're I can't live in your house and I'm not gonna drive your car. I want to know how you did exactly how you did what you did. And that and so I, I it's always been frustrating me. And that's so that's all I've ever done. I don't believe in motivation. I'm not a motivation guy. I'm a teacher. I've taught a lot of people. Uh, and then a lot of people that aren't in my hierarchy, like Christian and John and Dean and et cetera, I mean, many, many, many more uh, that I've mentored over the years. And people are starving for how to do it. You know, people want more. They want to be more successful. They want to have a better quality of life. They want to do more for their families. They, they, they want a great life. You know, I, I just wanted a great life. And, and I think that uh, this, the teaching part is, is the key. I think you need to teach people what to do. I got a bunch of questions. I'm going to go through them one by one. And then, uh, you know, if we could even open up some questions if you like, but that some of the guys sent me um, yesterday, Dean sent me. Like, well, first question is, what is work? In Primerica, the only thing that work is you being face to face with somebody. The rest of it's preparing to work. You're on a call, you're on a, on a Zoom call right now. This is not work. This is you preparing to work. Because when I get, when I work, I expect to get paid. You're not getting paid to listen to me right now. You're going to get paid if you get in front of somebody and you get them involved somehow, whether they become a client or they become a, a, a recruiter they, or both, and they become a recruit and they do business, you get paid, but you don't get paid for meetings. You get paid for getting results. And so, you can only get results if you get it, if you get on appointments. I mean, that's the bottom line. You got to be really focused on that. And then another thing somebody asked me, small is not small is not big. Most people think way too small. A hundred thousand is great, but you have people, you know, I've made, I don't know, close to $90,000 million in Primerica so far and my way to a hundred million. And, and that, that is, that is what's available to any of you who apply yourself and do the work and teach other people to do what you've done. It's not that complicated. It really isn't. You got to always be thinking. One of the things I always thought I did the work to become a professional salesperson to, to be really competent at the business. And I always told, you know, kind of said to myself, Hector, what would your business look like if you had 10 or 20 or 50 or a thousand people that were as good as you at the kitchen table can get the kind of results that you get. And so, and for me, that's, that would be huge. And for all, most of you on the call, imagine if you had people, you know, 10 or 20 or 30, 40, P50, 100 people like yourself. And so why wouldn't you not be spending every available moment teaching them how to do what you did and stop trying to motivate them? That's what people need to do. They, that's what, that, that you want to really grow your business. I was, I was talking to Christian, one of the things, you know, you, in order for you to grow your business, you have to retain people. Retention is the key you have. And the only way to retain, the only way to create retention in your business, you got to teach people how to make money and how, and the way that people learn how to make money is become, they become professional salespeople. I'm a professional salesperson. I'm not embarrassed about being a professional salesperson because sales is what makes the world go round. Okay. And I think you should be focused on being a professional salesperson because that makes everything easy. Recruiting is easier. Uh, getting people involved in your products and services is easier. Everything's easier when you are a pro at that. And everything about our business is all about sales. Whether it's getting them, get, then it, getting them to get on Zoom, you got to sell this meeting, or getting them to come to a fast start school, or getting them to come to an op meeting that you're putting on, or get them to meet with you to, to see if you, you, know, you can get them involved as a client or a, or a representative. Everything is sales. There's no part of our thing that we do that isn't sales. 
So if that's true, and it is, why would you not be focused on being a pro at that so that you can, you know, so you can really expand your business and, and create an incredible life for yourself? And then another question people ask is the power, the, what's the power of building a big base shop and strong first generation? Well, look, if you're, if you want a hierarchy, you know, I've got a 12,000 agents or something like that. And we do a lot of business. I don't know, four or 5,000 life sales a month. We do fit, on average about 50 million a month in securities investment business and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. And we recruit, you know, hey, three, hey Hector, yeah. Hector, I hate to interrupt, but we think that you might be accidentally tapping something um, or your headphone might be bumping something. Oh, maybe it is. Okay. It, it, um, at first, it sounded like somebody was, sounded like someone was typing in the background. But oh, okay. All right. <laughs> the Sorry microphone is hitting on his button. The top is, that, is that what it is? Yeah. I'll hold it apart so it doesn't rub on Thank my you. shirt. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, technology is not my forte, by the way. Um, the power of building a bit, you know, the thing is, is that if you, in, in Primerica, if you want to build a big hierarchy, you've got to build a big base shop. I, 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 most people are not going to build a big base shop. All right. That, that's just a, a given. All right. You have to understand that, but you are not smart unless you're always talking about building a big base shop, because you, if you want to get some people to build a big base shop, you have to be relentless about talking about building a base, big base shop. It, those of you guys who know me, I talk about that nonstop. I, I never stop talking about building a big base shop. I'm always doing that. And I talk about this. I say, look, what I found in Primerica, if you build a big base shop, to me, a big base shop is 100,000 or, or at least 50 is a, is a start of a big base. At a, at a 50 grand base, you can start promoting some RVPs and stuff. My goal would be somebody asked me if you had to do it over again, what would you do? If I had to do that, knowing what I know now, Number one, I wouldn't have got out of the field for another five or 10 years. I was the stupidest thing I ever did was get out of the field because I was really good at the kitchen table and closing people and getting recruiting people so, and teaching people. So one is I would not get out of the field until I was totally debt free and financially independent. I would stay on it. That takes discipline, but that, that's what I would do. The other thing I would have done is I would have built a $200,000 base shop. I would have got so wide. And I wouldn't have let up until I had 100 first generation RVPs. I got to like 38 or something like that. But I should have, if I had kept going, instead of making what I'm making, I'd be making three or four or five times what I'm making right now. I, I would have never let up on that because time goes by really fast. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm now 64 years old. I got in the business when I was 26, turning 27. That time went so fast, it's unbelievable. And that time for you is going to go that fast, especially if you're young and you're listening to me. Make a focus of, of doing that. Build a big base, build a strong first. If you do in our business, uh, if you're doing, a, a, you know, between two and 250 a month, assuming how much securities you're doing, that you're a seven figure earner. You're going to make seven figures. That's, that's like a given. You're just, it's going to happen. So if you know, that you could become a seven in a seven figure earner if you get to two or 250 through first in, in, in production and you run a solid securities business as well. That's automatic almost. And then you keep going, going to two and three and four, you know, that, that's not going to be that difficult. You can do that. You know, it's, it's totally doable. This is our opportunity today is better than it's ever been by a quotient. I don't know, by 10, a hundred times. It's so much easier today because we have so many successful people and so many examples uh, that you can point to of people that have you know from all walks of life that have done well you can share that with people so a big base shop's everything that 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 to me if if i'm you guys and i you're an rvp you're i would be if i if you don't have one i would be working like a maniac and trying to build one and if I, if I had, a, if I was an RVP already, I would be talking about that incessantly and show examples, talk about the people, even if they're not in your hierarchy, who are right now have, you can see like a Mario Arizon or a Gary Cornegay or, a, you know, a Willie, you know, uh, all these different people that have big bait and their businesses and their incomes are exploding. Why wouldn't you emulate the very thing that allows you to maximize your income in Primerica? You should be talking about that nonstop. Um, so you need to be, build a big hierarchy in order to have a great business. I mean, that's, the, I mean, you got to build a big base to have a great, great hierarchy, but what, what should you look like going RVP? Not, those of you, most of you probably on the call are not an RVP. 
You should be focused on becoming an RVP. The number one thing I talked about all the time and I focused on was getting wide. In other words, when I say get wide is and build a big base, get wide means hire directs, not hire people for your people, although you should be doing that nonstop. My focus is always on finding more people direct to me because that's one thing that I could control. You can't control what other people are doing, but you can surely control how wide you get. And that is only a prospecting issue. It's doing the work to, 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 to find the right people. But with this everything, with kind of solves everything and it smooths things out. If you want your income to not to go up and down like that, then the wider you are, the more stable your income is going to be. It's, that's what's going to happen. It's, it's kind of like, a, you know, growing a big bay shop with is the beginning of building a big bay shop. And, you, you know, you, it's just like I, I used to use this analogy all the time. Uh, my wife and I, Jan, we have two children. We have, now we have four grandchildren. And I think that's pretty much it. Jan's sister has five children and, and her five children. She has, I don't know, 15 grandkids now, something like that. So she got wide right through first and the, the rest of it kind of took care of itself. I never really worried about seconds and thirds and fourths and fifths. I focus on me getting a big bay shop and getting wide and teaching my the directs exactly what I was doing. And the depth start took care of itself. It starts happening organically. Make that your focus. If I'm you, that's what I would focus on relentlessly. So you should look at going RVP. I think you should be doing, you know, I think it's probably 30,000 a month, at least somewhere in that range. You know, the most important thing about an RVP promotion to me was always that the RVP, the potential RVP knew how to recruit, train and develop people independently of me. They knew how they had multiple legs, maybe two or three or four or five good legs or something like that. And, and the, and the replacement, the replacement should be a good replacement. I don't know. When I went RVP, I gave up three full-time guys that were between them were doing about $30,000 a month in premium. That was the replacement I gave up. The one great thing about replacement that's magical about Primerica is you give up replacement one time and I've taken it, I don't know, almost 40 times, okay? So you don't worry about the replacement. The only reason you should worry about the replacement is you decide you don't want to work anymore. If you're going to work and do the right things and teach your team, replacement's a non-issue it's a it's a genius part of our organization and what you know how you build a business you should you should be looking at it like that it's a very good thing um best idea is to develop faith you know, if you want to you you if you want to grow fast you got to develop field trainers you got to teach people you got to take a look what i always did is i looked at who are the most motivated people in my business who are the ones that really are listening to me and they're actually you know when i recommend them to do something to actually do it they're showing up to all the meetings those people i spent an enormous amount of time and energy with because those are the people that are going to become ultimately the rvps what a lot of people rvps do they have somebody that looks like a winner that is a winner is doing great they go oh i don't need to worry about them because they know what they're doing well you know what they don't they don't know exactly what you know you need to spend more time developing those motivated people because those are the ones that are going to turn into RVPs and have the potential to build a hierarchy of their own. They need more, more attention. They need more time. They need more one-on-one -on -one training. They need a lot of, lot of time. I spent you know, massive amounts of hours with like, like the likes of Rick Susie and Gary McCrumman and George Verdugo, people that were direct to me, Chris Howard, tons of time with them. The reason is because I could see they were motivated and they, they didn't need me to be pushing them. They wanted to know more. So I infused everything I knew, everything I knew how to do into those people. They, and they took off and they've now developed their own hierarchies, great hierarchies that are, you know, just doing phenomenal. Um, how important is it to overcome, object, learn to master overcoming objections? I have an audio at hexelmark.com uh, and I have a recommended reading list too. You should check that out. But I have an audio uh, overcoming objections that I did, oh my God, probably 30 years ago, but it hasn't changed. I mean, some of the verbiage is a little different, but the bottom line is learning how to overcome things like, uh, I want to think about it. I'm not a salesperson. I don't make a decision on the first night. I mean, there's all these common, there's about five to 10 very common objections that come up uh, almost all the time. And you need to learn how to overcome those because that's the, as soon as you aren't able to overcome an objection, you're dead in the water. There's nowhere to go. You can't, you can't close. You can't recruit. So you need to learn how to overcome them. They're very, very easy to overcome once you know the verbiage, okay? 
I, if I were you, I, what I did with my team, I said, if you listen, you need to listen to this audio like a hundred times until it becomes a hundred percent reflexive where you don't have to think when you hear, I want to think about it. You know exactly what to say. You go right into it. Why is that important? Do most people do that? No, hardly anybody does it, but all the people that have done it they all became RVPs. They're all making big money now. They're all doing fantastic. They're duplicating themselves. So it's the same thing like telling people to build a big base shop. Even though most won't do it, you should still tell them to do it. Some will do it. The ones that do do it, you're going to see uh, incredible success from them. They're going to really take off. Um, if you're starting today, well, I already did that. Um, what are you looking for in a person when you choose to, uh, to directly field train and mentor? I'm just looking for somebody that, that actually does what I say. It's so easy to identify the winners. They're the ones that just follow your instruction. They follow your advice. They do what you ask them to do. They show up to the meetings. Those are the people you spend more time with. You know, and the rest of them, what I was always very nice to everybody, no matter if they were not really focused and not really on it, like, and, but they were coming to the means. I'm always, I'm nice. I'm, hey, John, good to see you. How's Mary doing? Hey, great to see you again. And, and if you ever need any help, let me know, whatever. I didn't, I didn't berate them because they weren't on it. I just didn't pay attention to them. I didn't, I didn't invest energy in them. But if somebody was, you know, coachable and, and, and did what I asked them to do, I was, I went out of my way to develop a relationship with that person. Because that's the person that's going to help you grow your hierarchy. That's the person that's going to be an RVP and become su successful. Um, yeah, if someone had a video camera on you, what would you what would they see you doing each day? Uh, well, you know, pretty much I'll tell you what my days look like. Uh, and, and when I started building my business, you know, one of the things I knew what I wanted is, uh, you know how when you go on vacation, you do whatever you like to do. I mean, if you're going skiing, you go skiing, whatever. If it's, you know, for me, it's golf. I, you know, I know for John, it's golf, all John Lavin, but I love to golf, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you want to do or like to do. You like mountains, you like the beach. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But the one thing is, is uh, I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted my life to be as if I was on vacation every day. That, that, that's really what I wanted from my business. And one of the main things I wanted, because I, I know when I, when I go on vacation, you know, you get up whenever you want to, I go play a round of golf in the morning, maybe go have a nice lunch with your family, go to the pool in the afternoon. Then you figure out where you're going to go out for dinner, go to a great dinner, maybe catch a movie and you just do whatever you want. You know, that's, that's one of the great things about being on vacation yeah, is, you do, you. Go ahead. Is, is you doing what you want. And so I love the way that felt. And I go, I want to create through my business, a lifestyle where I'm on vacation almost every day of my life. And that's exactly what I did. I've been like that for years and years now, but uh, most of the days, my life revolves around food and golf. I like, I, we are foodies. If you would be like astonished how much money Jan and I spend on food. Okay. It's a lot, but we, we, we love great food. One of the reasons we love Las Vegas, I'm in Las Vegas right now, is because the food's the best in the whole world. I've been to 70 countries. There's no place I've been that has better food than Las Vegas, Nevada. Not New York, not anywhere. I'm telling you, it's the best. So many amazing restaurants. So food is a big deal. Golf's a big deal for me. Um, I, I don't play as much as I used to, but I play as much as I want to. And uh, I, I, I love that. And, and, and we still, we're still, we love the movies. I love, you know, I just love my life. My life's great. I love, I have four grandkids. I have two incredibly successful children and uh, I love spending time with them and uh, life is good. And we have, you know, the way we live is I, I spend some time in Las Vegas. I have a place in Cabo San Lucas. In fact, I'm building a new house there right now, which I'm so excited about. I can't wait till it's, it's incredible. And then uh, I have a place in, in, in uh, Newport Beach. So I follow the weather. So wherever the weather's the best, that's where you'll find me. You know, I'm here in Vegas right now because the weather's really good right now. As soon as it gets cold, back to Newport or back to Cabo, whatever. That's my life. I, just, I do whatever I want when I want. I don't go to meetings anymore. I do this. I love Zoom. I think Zoom is phenomenal. It's a great, great tool. And I just, you know, I have, I have that, that life it's, and it's, it's almost embarrassing. I don't talk about it a lot, but it's so you are in a place where you can create that 
you can create whatever lifestyle that you want to have. You have the, you have the tool, Primerica. It's the tool. It's not your life. It's the tool to create your life. But you can do that. So um, I don't know. Is there any other, Dean? I don't know if that's what you're kind of uh, thinking about or. Yeah, I've got another one. I've got another one for you. Okay. Hector, I, I, I uh, have heard you many times and we've had this discussion regarding the, the seven fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And um, I would love for you just to quickly review with everybody. The, the, I mean, it's such to sure. me, it became so logical for me once I heard these and then taught them over and over again. And um, to this day, I, I, that's all I think there is. I mean, yeah, I agree. fundamental. So could you just share with everybody your yeah. view of the yeah. seven that everyone, if they master these and teach them, yeah. what, what could happen? You know, what, what are those? Yeah, great. I have it. I have it written down here. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, it took. I don't know when I started uh, when I figured this out, but I was just looking at you know what what are the fundamental things that create a successful person in Primerica? What do they need to learn in order to do that? And so I came up with these, it, it, and they're in the order of importance, by the way. Um, and then the first thing is prospecting. You've got to become a professional prospector. This is another reason why you need to become a professional salesperson, because it's going to help you tremendously with prospecting. All right. So because prospecting is, a, is the number one thing I would be teaching a new person, how to prospect. In other words, how to call their family, how to call their friends. How, that's prospecting. And so um, that, that is really important that you understand that nothing happens without prospecting in the sales business, nothing. You've got to become you're really great at it. Even if you don't like doing it, even if it makes you uncomfortable, it doesn't matter. It's imperative that you become a great prospector. We've got tons of audios and, and different uh, you know, scripts that you can use to prospect. It's, it's not complicated to prospect, but you have to get great at prospecting. Your RVP can help you with that. And then the second thing is setting appointments because once you prospect, you got to set the appointment. Without the appointment, you can't do a presentation. So setting appointments, you got to become very adept at setting appointments. One of the things that I'll just share real quickly, when I was setting appointments, I'd say, John, so I'm talking to John and Patty Lavi, Lavin, right? So I say, hey, John, listen, um, I'm calling him, by, uh, prospecting him, or maybe I got a referral and, to call him. And I say, hey, hey, John, you have a, we have a mutual friend of Dean Francis, and he asked me to give you a call. Um, and this is prospecting, by the way. This is a part of prospecting. He says, I said, I said, he, he, Dean was so excited about what I was able to do for him that he asked me, I said, I asked him, who do you care about that you want to really help them, uh, you know, shore up their financial situation and become financially independent and maybe debt free at some point. And he says, oh, you got to talk to John and Patty Lavin. Is that, is that accurate? Is that true? Is that something you'd be interested in becoming debt free and financially independent? And he says, yeah, of course. That's right. Oh, great. Listen, um, uh, so when we get together, I'm going to show you how to get out of debt. I'm going to show you how to invest money so that you can retire so much sooner than you're on pace to, to retire. Which of those two things would you be most interested in? Accumulating money. Okay, great. Well, then that's what we'll focus on when we get together. And that's how I would set up a point. Just find out what they want. Let them know what I'm going to do for them and tell them, okay, then we'll focus on that. And people are, real, are very receptive to that. It's very simple. You don't have to like, oh, uh, 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 you just ask them. What, you know, which of those two things would you be most interested in? And then that, I said, great, well, we'll focus on that. What, what day do you have free? I've got this Wednesday at six or Thursday at eight, which time works best for you and Patty. And then I set up the appointment and then we, here we go. We're off to the races, you know? So it's setting appointments is critical. And then once you set the appointments, you've got to have a great presentation, a question oriented, tie down oriented presentation. In other words, as you're asking questions, you're tying them down. To, um, you know, are you open to setting up a, a, a plan to get you debt free and financially independent? And they say, yes, of course. Oh, great. That's a tie down. Right. So you just you, you, if you um, totally focus on what it is you're going to do for people and get them excited about the fact that this plan that you're going to implement for them is going to help them to get debt free and financially independent at some point in the future if they follow it. So I think most people, if they have if they're you know, reasonable people are going to want to do that. And then um, that presentation, really work on that, make it simple and clear and to the point, right? And show examples of, uh, I always like showing before and after examples of this is a client that we met with, 
John and Mary Smith, uh, obviously we don't have their name, but this is what we did for them. And uh, how does that sound to you? Does that sound like something you'd like to have happen in your life, John? And he's going to say, yeah, of course. Well, great. Well, then what we're going to do then today is we're going to take some, I'm going to do a little questionnaire. I'm going to ask you some questions, find out where you're at right now, and then show you how we can move you from where you are to exactly where you want to be in the future. And that's, that's what I would tell them just like that. So you do the, you know, you can set up, do the, um, the FNA. Uh, and then overcoming objections. Well, that's obvious. You know, they're going to say things. People are going to say, well, I don't make a decision on the first appointment or, you know, I need to talk to somebody or whatever it is. You need to know how to overcome objections. That's the fourth thing. OK, you've got to get good at that because you can't go anywhere if you can't overcome those. You're dead in the water. So once you master that, then that's going to make things much easier. Then you need to master all the products. You need to know how our life product works, how our securities products works. Uh, maybe now if you're doing loans, how does a loan situation work? How does the, uh, uh, you need to know how they work because we have this array of products and you should, you know, what you should try to market all, as many as you can. The more products you market with an individual, the longer they're going to be, they're going to stay on as a client of yours. They're going to, they're going to see the value. One of the things I wanted to always show people is tremendous value. So not only would they stay on, they would be excited about referring me to their friends and family and people that they cared about. That's why it's so important to get really great at, the, at, at how the products work and how to sell the features and benefits of those products. And then recruiting. You got to learn how to recruit at the kitchen table. I recruited 99% of the people I ever recruited. I recruited them at the kitchen table. I, I personally very rarely recruited somebody at an op meeting I didn't do it personally because I knew how to recruit somebody at a kitchen table and I wanted to be face to face. And I wanted to see, you know, when I asked them the questions and showed them where I want to see their, their, their reaction to that and how, and, and, and if they have any you know questions about, it, I could overcome those and I can close them. So I, I, that's what I learned how to do. That's how I did it. Uh, not everybody has the expertise at this point to do that. So sometimes they, you know, the new people need to get people to meetings and put them in front of you, the leader, and, and that sort of thing. But at some point, you got to learn how to recruit people at kitchen tables because if you're training somebody, if you can't recruit for recruit people for the people you're training, it's going to be hard to grow your business. Okay, and that's how you lock people in. So one of the things I always want to do if I'm taking John out and I'm field training him, my goal is to get him on 15 to 20 appointments. Before he gets his license, my goal is to recruit, you know, three, four or five people for him because that's going to lock him in. If I can, and, and, I, if I, and I close, you know, five or 10 or 15 transactions for him and I recruit, you know, four or five people for him, that's going to motivate him to get a license because he's going to see that the business actually works. That's why the professional sales thing is so important because I want John to see that this works, that it's, it's something that's doable. And then I'm going to, then after every appointment, I'm going to demystify what I did. I'm going to talk to them about how I close them, how I answer that question. Do you see when they ask this? I asked, I answered this way. This is the reason. This is how you get results. And I want them to see, and I'm going to teach you, John, exactly how to do that. So you have, when you're in a qualified market, you're going to close seven or eight or nine out of 10 people that you sit down with, and you're going to become an RVP and you're going to make money, dude. You're going to make big bank. Okay. I wanted to, I wanted him to see that, right? And then getting them off to a fast start. So if I recruit somebody, that's the seventh, is getting a new recruit off to a fast start and field training them. The, the, for me, the IBA, I didn't care about the IBA. I cared about getting them and getting their list, that top 25, 30, 40 list, and getting them in the field and getting them to see that this works. That was the number one thing I focused on. The IBA, I, obviously I got that, but I didn't care about the IBA because the IBA is useless Unless you get them in the field, unless you get their top 25 plus list, unless you get that and get them in the field and show them how to make money and how to do this thing, the, 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 the IBA doesn't matter. Yeah, it gets you to a maybe you win a contest or something like that, but I'm not we're here to try to make money and build a big business. OK, and that is because you get people field trained correctly. You get people knowing that this works. You want you want to, you know, my my, uh, my on average, when I recruited somebody. I closed at least five transactions with that person, at least five on average. And my recruit to code ratio for probably more than a decade was 60%. So if I recruited somebody, six out of 10 people got a license. I guarantee you right now, there's nobody in Primerica doing that. Not even close. Most people are getting one for one or whatever. They're recruiting a hundred people and, you know, doing 50 grand in premium, which is retarded in my opinion. I mean, that means nobody's getting trained. 
I, that that doesn't make sense to me. I was talking to Christian. What my best year in a bay shop when I I averaged uh, thir- thirty two recruits in one hundred and fifty three sales a month. So that's five transactions per recruit. That's what I did, and that's because I'm a trainer, not a motivator. I was teaching people to be me. I was trying to duplicate me. You are, if you're good at the business and you're, you know what you're doing, your total goal should be duplicating you, getting people up to your level of confidence. And that's also how you create confidence in people. The more confident your people are, the more confident they're going to be, the more they're going to be able to build their own business alone on their own without you having to be there for every step of the way. You want, you want a lot of freedom. I have massive freedom because I have so many people making big money that whether I'm here or not here, it doesn't really matter. Okay. It doesn't really matter at this stage of the game. So that's what, but that's the training issue, right? So that's what I taught my people to do. The ones that listen, not everybody listened. In fact, most people did not. But the ones that did have done really, really, really well. And that's what you're looking to do. How's that, John? Perfecto. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Another question? I think we have a few more minutes. Okay. Hey, Hector, you, you, one time you said from stage when you came up here, how can you stand walking into a room and nobody knows who you are. <laughs> and maybe that maybe that's part of our own insecurities. I don't know. Maybe people are secure enough that they can, can do it, but I couldn't. And that used to bother me so much. I wanted to be known, you know, and how important is that for people who succeed here? I think it's really important. I think most people, you know, Art, Art said, you know, everybody wants to be somebody. Everybody has a flashy neon sign on their chest saying, make me feel good, make me feel special, right? That's, that needs, that's absolutely true. Uh, and what you, if you learn how to make people feel good and make people feel special, then that's one of the ways you recruit people and also how you close transactions and you get people to do stuff. The better you are and making people feel special, uh, the key, I, I, I always wanted, you know, I was a good athlete, you know, I played college basketball and college tennis, and I played all the sports in high school. I was a pretty good athlete. I was a good student, like a B, B plus, you know, 3.5 GPA. I was good at that, but I was never like great, you know, like I wasn't great. I was good, probably better than average, but good. And I, and when I got in Primerica, um, my I, I, I said to myself, I said, you know what? I, I'm tired of being good at stuff. I'm going to, when I, when I plant my flag here, I'm not going to be good. I'm going to be great. I'm going to do everything possible to make sure I'm great at this, not good at it, but great at it. And that's what I did. I worked my tail off. I studied like crazy. I mastered, you know, the time management, the leadership, the sales part. I mean, I did everything I could read. I mean, I probably read well over 1500 books on personal development over the years. And the reason was, is because I, when I walked into a room, I wanted people to go, Oh my God, there's actual art. That might be an ego. Well, I think you have to have some kind of an ego to be great at something. You, you think Tiger Woods has an ego? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, anybody that's great at what they, they have an ego. You can't be great at something unless you have the ego to do the work to make that happen. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. And so I wanted to be that guy. I wanted to be the guy. I wanted to be the guy that, you know, the go-to guy in my family. And I have been, you know, I wanted to be, you know, I wanted my wife when she woke up in the morning, looked at me and said, Oh, thank God I married him. I didn't want to go, Oh my God, what did I get myself into? You know, I wanted, I want my kids to feel that way about me. I, I think everybody really does if they'd admit it deep down. Right. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to be, uh, be special if you do the work, if you're willing to do the work. Anybody else? Hector, I got one. Can you talk about the balance about being super great, as you say, I'm, I wanted to be the best and still not be too smooth at the kitchen table? Because if you're too smooth, if you're too good, then well, I don't think you could be too good or too smooth, honestly. But I mean, <laughs> I think you should. I, I think you should be real. That's that's the thing. Is when I'm talking to people, I'm not trying to impress them. I'm sharing information that can change your life. I'm I'm good because I know what I'm talking about and I'm confident. People want to do business with people who are confident and knowledgeable. They don't want you know, like if if you're going to have uh, you know heart surgery, do you want the 
the, the average guy that graduated from med school middle of his class? Or do you want the, the cardiologist that's, uh, that's, that's the best? People want to be involved with people who are, who are really good. Because when I, used to, when I recruited people, I actually would say, you know, hey, Brad, listen, one of the reasons that you should come and business with me, because you're never going to find anybody who's as good as me at this, and nobody that's going to be willing to work harder to help you become successful in me. You, you don't know this, but I'm telling you, this is the best thing that's ever going to happen to you if you get in business with me, because I'm really good at this. And I would say it like that. I'm really good at this. I know how to get results. Let me show you. And so you might go, well, that's cocky and arrogant, but you know what? It's not if it's true. It's not if it's true. It's not if you've done the work to be great at what you do, right? It's not. So I want him to know that I don't want him to just think, oh, this is another sales guy trying to sell me. No, 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 no. This is a life-changing situation, potentially. That's what I wanted people to know. And, uh, I, and if you do the work to be great, you can talk to people straightforward. And I wasn't trying to brag. I just tell them a fact. That's a fact. You know, anybody that's actually listened to me and done what I teach, they've done great. Most people don't. That's just the way it is. But the ones that have, right, some of you have. I know John has, I know Christian has, I know Brad has, right? So uh, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not bragging if it's true, if you will. Okay. Don't be worried. I'm not, I stopped worrying about what people think about me so long ago. I don't really care. I, I, I hope people like me and I hope people respect me, but it's not going to change my life. If you don't, I know who I am. I know what I'm trying to do. I know what I'm, how I'm, I know that I've helped a lot of people and I, my goal in life is to help a lot more. And so whatever anybody else thinks, that's fine. That's on them, not on me. I'm not worried about that. And I just, and then I think that's how you should operate, yeah. you know, your life. You know, Hector, I want to thank you for uh, what you've done today. And it's just been so great to just listen to you again, because before it was recruit, recruit, get them to the meeting, get them to the big event. And then my philosophy was hopefully the event <laughs> would get them as committed as me. Right. And then when I realized you, when I met you and you talked about the fundamentals, oh, you mean I got to become a field trainer. Mm -hmm. I've got to go out there and I got to be able to do the business in front of the person to prove to them that the business worked. Yes. And then you, so, so when I hear you talk, we got to master prospecting. So all of us mm -hmm. have to have a curriculum to equip our people to become master prospectors. Absolutely. We have to have a curriculum. This is how we set appointments. Absolutely. This is what we present. Yep. This is how we close. These are the answers to all the objections. This is how to recruit at the kitchen table. This is how to get a new recruit into their warm market. And when you learn how to do those things, baby, the, your life changes. Absolutely. And then you develop field trainers. You have a big base shop. And then Absolutely. your life goes into like dream. You're living in another world. Absolutely. hundred percent. That's exactly <laughs> what happens. And then you just start over again to prospecting. And the only thing that could stop you from being successful once you have those down is you stop prospecting. That's the only thing that could, that could derail you. You don't prospect anymore. As long as you're prospecting, you have those down. It's not a matter if you're going to be successful. It's just how successful are you going to be? And by the way, hope is not a plan. Okay. Hope is not a plan. Preparation is everything. So Hector, oh. it, along, along those lines, if you think about the meetings, how important this, this question comes in from Chris Howard, who's on YouTube. He couldn't get yeah. into this. How important is running great trainings right? And big events and growing your team from event to event, the right kind of events, because yep. you're doing the right things behind the scenes. And then at the event. So how important is that piece? And what should those events look like? Maybe you could just well, the, the training should be up to me is all about how to, I mean, the, I mean, obviously, you do a, a op meeting, you're showing people what we do, and how great it is, and trying to get them excited about our opportunity, and that we have and etc. Okay. But the but the but my focus always was on the on the on training like if i would invite if i invited um, you out to speak for me i would I, this i always said this name i didn't do it very much but if i invited you out to speak to me to my group right i said look 
I don't want you to motivate these people because they don't need motivation. They're already motivated because the fair, mere fact that they're showing up to the damn meeting means they're motivated. So don't try to motivate them. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is I want you to go over exactly what you did. And I want you to uh, I look at that audience and I want you to think of this. If this were my team, this is what I would want them to know how to do this thing. That's what I want you to cover. I don't want you to talk about your house and your cars and all that. Maybe at the end of the meeting, you want to do that. I never talked about that much because I wanted people to be equipped. I, I, I was a person in the audience that always said, I don't care. Tell me how you did it. Show me how you did it. That's all I'm interested in because I'm willing to do the work to make it happen if you show me how. Clear to me, baby, and it's even more clear now. Good. You, you, you actually got the whole thing, you know, Christian. What you were just saying is, is that's it. It's not no, complicated. It's just, it's not just, that complicated. It is not. It's just, but you know what? It's tedious and it's yeah. repetitive. And and type A personalities don't like tedious and repetitive. They want always to change things up. If you guys have been hearing me for how many years, John and Christian, for 25 years or whatever, right? I haven't changed my tune one iota. The genius that Art Williams had is he said exactly the same thing every single time he spoke. He never deviated. Do you not remember that? He never deviated. He repeated himself over and over and over because he knew people need to hear things like a thousand times before it, you know, you know, goes through that cranium of them. There's people need to hear it over and over. Again. And, and you know what? Like you were saying, Christian, you've heard me say all this stuff before a million times. But you know what? It's it just like it's like oh my god, I forgot that. I I've not been doing that. All right, right? You just you remember. I got to start doing that again. So it's exactly. just a re it's a reminder. So I'm not, I don't have a problem with being repetitious because that's what wins. You know, I, I right now, I, my golf game su this sucks right now. So I'm working with this new guy. He's a really good teacher. And, I, and I'm making a bunch of changes and it's super uncomfortable to make changes, right? You know that, John, right? And so, uh, and, but you know what? I know I have to do the reps. I got to do, if I'm going to change so that it becomes automatic and not me having to think, okay, you got to be in this, you know, you got to do the reps. There's no getting around doing the reps, all right? And that same thing's true in Primerica. You got to do the reps, and, you know, and you're always having new people. So you got to keep repeating the same stuff because every month, hopefully you have 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 new people. So if you're not repeating yourself, you're missing the boat. Gold. <laughs> Greatest growth in our business that always occurred. I took notes. I just took three pages more. I'll go back through this video later. I'll review them. I'll rewrite them uh, so that it's very clear. Uh, and I will start when I hear you. I just I'm a I'm a copycat. I'm literally a chameleon. I'll even get a little Hispanic accent going. Go. A little, a little Hector, and I go, and it's helped me, and it's helped me tremendously. It's helped a lot of people, and that's that's the sign of what's so special about what you've done, Hector. So thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. Juanito, I'm going to start calling you Juanito. <laughs> Juan Levine. Juan Levine. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, what an incredible call, Hector. Thank you again for being back on here today. I was thinking, um, you know, a lot of times we don't need to be taught. We need to be reminded. And I feel like yeah. that's what you do. You Not remind true. us over and over and over of the fundamentals. And uh, you, you keep us fired up about focused on them. Anyway, we look forward to having you back again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whenever, any, anytime, man. Lo I love helping you guys. I'm so proud of you guys, and I'm so excited about what you guys are doing. I think it's just, it's been missing for a long time, and uh, it's, it's just brilliant. Hector, you have influenced all of the LFIC, the leadership, that senior leadership gr group, in an amazing way. And now with this forum, we have, you have the opportunity to influence a whole new army of people in our company and what a tr we we get it we get to watch that unfold. That's no, good. I'm, and I'm glad and in help. five years and in ten years, hear the stories right. of the lives that you've changed. Some more testimonies. That's awesome. That's that's what I live for. You know, my my whole uh, everything, my purpose in life. Uh, I was going to become a clinical psychologist because I I, I people really need uh, help with their self image, and I think uh, 
what I've done in Prime America, why I'm such a proponent of training, because I know when people learn and they teach, when I teach the right stuff and they learn it, their self-image improves, their self-confidence improves. And that's really my purpose in my whole life is to help as many people with their self-image and their self-confidence so that they can pursue their life and their dreams of where they want to. That is absolutely why I'm not one bit tired about running my business. You don't see me. I'm always working on my business. Always. I, I never let up on that. You just don't see me at meetings, but uh, I, I have, I never go a day. I don't go an hour without thinking about it, honestly. <laughs> so uh, I'm just really excited uh, about what you guys are. I'm really excited for you. And I'm excited for you and your lives and how you're changing your lives. And, you know, there's a, uh, there's an amazing world out there that everything costs a lot of money and you got to make money bottom line. Right. Okay, guys.